right. What's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome back. Uh, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm having the best day of my life because I just consumed probably like a thousand grams of sugar just now. Mm -mm -mm. All right. Uh, I've got uh, I've got a great show for you today. Um, I did just have a little bit of a uh, midlife crisis with my bucket of candy. Yes, I have a bucket of candy. And yes, it is just for me. So I love these Sour Punch straws. So I got like a whole bucket. And I was like, this will last me till October. Um, which was foolish. My, my ignorance was baffling. Um, so... I noticed that when the you know the container was full, it was probably about right here. Um, uh, I I I was I was bright eyed and I was optimistic about September, even though I really only got these like three days ago. Um, we're already half halfway through uh, September, but you know I was like, oh, this will, this is gonna be a good couple of weeks. Um, I can I can do whatever I want. I got my whole life ahead of me, and now. I can see the bottom of the bucket and that bums me out. I'm like, what? It's only been like two days. What? Where's my candy? Um, and so like, I, I'm gonna, I, I can see the end of my, my happiness and, and I, and I, I am a little dreadful about it. I don't know what I'm going to do with myself whenever I finish this and, and, uh, just making the most of the candy I have left. I'm just gonna buy some more candy afterwards. You can't do that with life, I guess, but that is pretty neat. Anyway, um, now that I bummed you out thoroughly, go eat some candy, you'll feel better. Um, so I'm gonna do another gouache painting for you guys today. Uh, I'm really happy with the way these are coming out. Um, these are coming out kind of the way I, I imagine them to, um, the, the images I have in my mind are actually, you know, coming, coming, coming onto the page pretty well. Um, uh, I've been asked before, like, you know, how do you, how do you draw from the mind and how do you get for what you, you picture to the page? Um, and the answer is practice. I know that sounds flippant and that I don't mean it to be, it's just, because I was there too, I, I wanted I wanted to know that there was a secret. There's, I wanted to ask an artist, like, how do you do good? And they would tell me, well, like, well okay, but don't tell anybody. And you sell your soul to the devil, right? First, all right, you gotta do a couple of things. That's the first thing. The second thing is also practice. But the third thing is you sell your soul to another deity and then while they're busy arguing over the legalities of who actually owns your soul, you're you're making you're making that sweet, sweet wallet juice already. And it doesn't matter. Um, they never told me that. I'm beginning to think that isn't true. Uh, but what's worked for me is just practice. You know, you you keep uh, <laughs> you keep making stuff and, and you keep uh, doing your best and eventually your brain will communicate to your hand what it is that it's supposed to put on the page. And um, it takes a while sometimes, sometimes it doesn't. Um, some people are very fortunate that way. Other people are fortunate in other ways. Um, so uh, learning the like hard work and having a good work ethic is, it can be more, more beneficial than just being born with um, talent, right? And if you have both, you're you're unstoppable basically i mean that's that's one of those things that like it's very hard to teach people to have a good work ethic um i've heard i've heard this and and it's uh it's something that i see <laughs> and it doesn't it doesn't matter what industry you're in it doesn't matter what what kind of job you have if you look around and you realize you cannot pay people to care about their job not really um, you can pay them to where they care about their paycheck and they, they don't want to mess up on stuff, but you can't really pay them to, to really care about what it is they're doing. And that's something that I've kind of noticed uh, lately. I don't know why I got off on that tangent. 
but uh, <laughs> I'm going to be talking a little bit about uh, this painting and uh, its significance to me. Uh, if you're new to this channel, if you're new to this uh, playlist, basically, uh, this is a sketchbook uh, video where I, I am taking part in a uh, sketchbook project for the Brooklyn Library of Art. Um, it's 16 pages, so I'm doing 16 paintings, drawings um, over over the next you know few weeks. This is actually the halfway point. This is my eighth um, painting, so uh, I'm almost there. <laughs> Halfway is there, uh, but uh, yeah. So uh, you know, all of these paintings are inspired by uh, music, uh, different songs that have meant something to me uh, emotionally uh, and I, I just kind of this is kind of a nostalgic book for me I just kind of get to go back and, and revisit um, memories that I find were useful in some way they, they taught me a lesson um, I I grew because of these memories that I have um, so uh, yeah without further ado I'm gonna dive into the painting I think you guys are really gonna like this one uh, the song that I have based this painting off of is called Driver Surprise Me. It's by The National. Uh, the link will be in the description. Um, and we're coming into October. Uh, so another uh, announcement for you guys. Uh, if you guys are looking into getting uh, comic books that I've made with my brother, uh, with uh, some friends in, in Oklahoma, uh, the link was also in the description for that. Uh, it's Indie Planet. Dot com and uh, we're selling our books on there um, free digital downloads by the way so if you just want to see it but uh, you don't you don't really have a whole lot of money money's kind of tight right now I get it um, check out the, the free digital downloads we've got um, issues one and two up right now issue three is in production um, I think I talked about this in the last video I'm not sure when exactly that's gonna be like physically out but uh, uh, we're working on it. We're getting there. Uh, I'm really excited about it. I really, I'm really excited for you guys to see it. It's probably some of my best work in uh, in sequential art. Um, I'm really happy with the stuff I was able to do on there. Uh, horror books is just kind of where my heart lies, uh, and so I, I'm I'm really happy with the way it came out. Um, the story was written by my girlfriend Amanda. Uh, it's a really fun story. It's a really cool story. Um, my brother did uh, a story as well. He's he's coloring the entire book. He's lettering the entire book, and uh, he always does a fantastic job. And I am also there. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna get to the video. I hope you guys have a great day. I'll see you at the end of it. All right. So this painting is um, inspired by a song called "Driver Surprise Me" by The National, a uh, fantastic band. Uh, the song is about um, kind of just being really uh, being uh, confident, I guess. And, and that's that's really what I want to talk about today. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story uh, that kind of harkens back to, I think, two videos, three videos ago, where I talked about the time that I had this disease, diverticulitis. Um, so when I was in the hospital, and even I think whenever I got out, they were still giving me medications. Um, they gave me a lot of medications that were antibiotics and, and they uh, they were probably the strongest stuff you could get. Um, I don't know what it was. It just makes you super healthy. Uh, I always kind of thought of them as the uh, super soldier serum that they give Captain America just because I felt um, way better than I probably should have and, and not like high or anything like that. I just felt stronger. I just felt like healthier. Um, it, in general, uh, whenever I, I had those uh, antibiotics. And uh, when I got out of the hospital, um, it took me probably about two, uh, about a year and a half to a year uh, to look in the mirror and not care about anything I saw there. And that sounds weird, but let me explain. So uh, about five or six years um, before I went to the hospital, I had probably started whenever I was like 19 or 20, but I didn't really, it didn't really become a problem until a few years later. Um, I had always had acne. I, I had always had, um, I think it's called post-inflammatory pigmentation, 
where it's just dark there and it's always going to be dark there. And I had looked it up and there's like, yeah, there's not really a whole lot you can do. Um, you're just going to keep getting these uh, red spots. And um, I had these two huge red stripes on my face, like going from like the inside of my eyes down to like my jaw. And uh, I was very self-conscious about it. And there were well-meaning people that kept bringing attention to it. They'd be like, you know, I was reading about that and you should try this. Or like, I, you know, I'd be talking to somebody else and they'd be like, oh yeah, I still, I see you still have that. It's getting pretty bad, huh? Yeah, I guess. Can, can we not talk about it? I was actually feeling good and I forgot about it for a second. But like, you know, people don't mean to like bring you down, but when you're self-conscious about stuff, I mean, it just kind of happens. Um, and so when I, I got out of the hospital, I noticed that I didn't have any more pimples, like nothing new showed up. And then like probably six months after that, I noticed that the redness was going away for the most part. I, I, I didn't have any marks there uh, that were like clearly defined anymore. And it took, like I said, about a year and a half or so, and I didn't have any uh, discoloration. Um, now I still get red there and there's still, you know, like it, it's fine. I, I, it's gotten to the, to the point where like, it doesn't bother me anymore, but, uh, I had, I had this one experience where I was really happy to be roasted. Uh, I don't even know if you can call this roasted. It was like thrown into a furnace for a second, but it was, uh, I was at Walmart. Um, I was, I was getting a, a canvas for like this little project I, I had planned on doing. And uh, I was in the craft section, of course, and then there was two kids. There, there was a little boy and I think a little girl, and they had their, I, what looked like older sister. She looked like a student at Tech or something. She was getting, it looked like, a, you know, really quick art supplies uh, for, for some project, I guess. And uh, the little boy, and she was doing her best to kind of keep the kids, like, in line, keeping them close to her and making sure they didn't run away. And... Um, they kept yelling something. I, I wasn't really paying attention to what it was they were yelling because I'm, I'm over here minding my own business. I'm, I've worked at Walmart before. I got used to, you know, kids screaming things next to me and then just tuning them out because that's just what you have to deal with. Um, and so I, I picked up the, the canvas size that I needed. I was like, yeah, I think that's it. Meanwhile, this kid is still yelling something. And I hear the, the, the older sister or whatever be like, shh, shh, keep it down. Like, don't say that. And I turn around and I see the little boy and he's looking at me like he's never seen something like me before. And he's just, he's just yelling, big fat beard -o! a big fat beard -o! And I'm like, what, <laughs> what the heck is this? You know, um... I, and I wasn't, like, offended. I wasn't like, oh, he's calling me a fat guy. I was like, what? Like, I had never been... I had never really been picked on for, like, my weight or having a beard. Uh, I didn't even know you could get picked on for having a beard. Like, my brothers, like, picked on me and told me I look uh, funny with a beard. I'm like, all right. And so, like, I was... Uh, <laughs> I didn't know how to take it. I just thought it was really funny. And so... <laughs> Uh, I walked away from that and I was like, you know what? He's right. I am fat and I do have a beard. That kid's going to be a detective someday. <laughs> you know, astute. That kid's astute. And um, I walked away. I paid for the, the, the canvas and I got into my car. And I sat there for a second thinking like, oh, you know, he didn't make fun of like my, my red marks on my face. He didn't, he didn't pick on that, like or my, my, my acne or something. And it was at that moment that I was like, oh, that's all right. I feel pretty good about that. I started thinking about, like, my life after that, like, or my, my life, I should say, before that, where, you know, I just, I had no confidence. And um, I think of this song uh, very often, and I imagine this, um, this dark kind of character just, you know, very ecstatic to be himself there's a line in the song that says um i'm brand new reinvented without a scratch daisy fresh and arrow straight and that uh that's exactly how i felt after after that operation that that surgery and and i i don't think i've necessarily been the same ever since i've, I've always felt more uh more confident 
and of course you get more confident I think with age you stop caring about what other people might think and uh, I, I had never been like very concerned with that but you start thinking about it in other ways I guess I think my skill level has has gone up anyway in uh, painting and, and uh, presentation and that's part of what uh, this painting was about as well like I, this right here is a representation of a version of our painting class uh, our painting lab I should say uh, it's very fixed up and it's it's had a, a floor job and a painting job and you know new lights and uh, a change in dress code of course but that's where I remember fe feeling the most vulnerable uh, before that I, I always felt like oh man I got to talk about my paintings and I, I don't know uh, I'm not you know that charismatic and I, I don't know how to talk about my my stuff and this is sort of me revisiting that memory of uh, uh, critique but uh, anyway guys that's that's the painting that's my rambling for the week uh, thanks for watching and I will see you back in the studio I'm gonna eat some uh, some sour punch straws now if you'll excuse me I think I've gone too far and I may or may not have gotten diabetes within the past hour. It was worth it. Anyway, so um, this is a pretty close uh, representation of what I was imagining for this for this painting. So um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Thanks for, for stopping by. Um, I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you guys get some candy that makes you happy. And, um, uh, uh, in the, uh, in the comments, you know what my question of the week is, what is your favorite, um, your favorite season? For me, it's fall. Uh, I love between like fall and winter that it gets real like cozy and like, um, that's that's the most overcasty part of the year and for me that's that's ideal that's my that's my dream weather where it gets like misty or foggy and it's cold and there's overcast and it's a little bit spooky but it's it's very calming weather for me uh, that's that's kind of my my jam um, some people really like summer they like going out to the beach and doing stuff outside as you can tell I'm not that guy but you know what, if, if you want to be that guy, you can. Um, you know, some people really like uh, spring. It's very uh, optimistic and hopeful. I'm also not that guy. Uh, so uh, anyway, I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks for, thanks for watching. Um, remember to like, subscribe, um, hit the bell for notifications. I, I've heard that like there's some problems with like the notification thing. So make sure that bell is clicked. Um, and then just, you know what, check back here every Monday. Every Monday I've got a new video, marketing your calendars, um, remind your friends to remind you, to remind them to watch the videos, uh, you know, whatever is easiest. <laughs> um, but yeah, thanks for, thanks for stopping by. I'll see you guys in the next video. Until that day, good luck and Godspeed. If I'm already, you know, from already sick. One, one more nail in the coffin. I can make these things out of it like a heroin or something. Oh my God. Baby needs that fixed.